Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today is Friday. Praise God. Hey, today is the first Friday in the month of July. And God is bringing to pass every word he has spoken to you about for this month of July. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Now take this seriously because God is going to answer you. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We've been talking about following to know. Following to know. And I've been sharing some thoughts with us. I'll read something Jesus said. In John chapter 8 and verse 31. John 8 and verse 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word. Now, Old King James used the word, If you continue in my word. Now take note of that statement. Abiding in his word means staying in his word. It also means following his word. See, when, when you get to that point where the word becomes your guiding principles. Now, when we say the word, please understand this. Now, if you've been following me um, carefully on this broadcast, you will know what I mean when I say the word, you see. We're not just talking about the Bible. Why we cannot say the, or substitute the Bible for the word there is because a lot of understanding we have about the Bible is faulty. I didn't say the Bible is faulty. I say a lot of our understanding of the Bible is faulty. So from that place of um, fault, we begin to judge things. And, and most times we realize that our judgment is false or wrong. But you see, it's difficult for you to fault the word of God that comes to you. You know, when we say this thing sometimes, people don't get it. See, when God speaks to you, you won't argue about it. You will just obey and do. But you see, what many times what brings about argument is when we try to analyze scriptures and why is there an argument because of different understandings not because the scripture has a problem but because of our different myopic understanding and the 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 laziness to open up your heart so if you don't receive the word of god you will i've told you this thing many times if you just base your knowledge and understanding on reading the Bible, you will end in error. When I mean you will end in error, not deliberately ending in error, I'm saying you will get to a point that one day you realize that, ah, I think I got it all wrong. Yes, because most times, you see, you were, you were, you were designed to... Jesus said it. God said it. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds. Please take note of that. Proceeds. Proceed is present continuous tense. He didn't say man shall live by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That would have been past tense. So you could say go look for what God has said. But then he said man shall live by every word that proceeds. So if you say... Um, um, the, this farm shall be watered, or this farm, sh yeah, this farm shall be watered by um, the water that proceeds from that river. Now you know that you have to make sure for this farm to survive, you have to make sure that that water from that river is getting to the farm now, not before. So when God made that declaration that man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, that tells you that on God's part, he will make sure that there is a channel for the word of God to be communicated to us. 
On our part, we cannot live by the water we received two years ago or the water that, or the word that we received five years ago or three weeks ago even. If you are living by the word that you received three weeks ago and, and this is three weeks after, you might just start heading for death. Because you can't say that um, you ate food three weeks ago except some supernatural food like the one that was given to Elijah that he carried for 40 days. But say he went in the strength of that food for 40 days. Meaning for those 40 days after he ate that food, he wasn't fasting. He was full. Praise God. That's some miracle food. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, you can't say you ate food three weeks ago and so you don't need food now. You know, for you to be healthy, you must make sure you eat as frequent as, as is allowed. You know what I mean by that? At least the worst situation, once a day. Except where you decide to, you know, sometimes we go on dry fast, three days. And even when you go on some extended dry fast, it, you know what it will do to your body? Your physical body now. So if you believe you've got to be taking food every day to live, why is it difficult to accept that you need the voice of God daily? So is it, is, you know, when we, when we say you need the voice of God daily, you know, people just think that means ah, I can't do any other thing. I'll just sit down. And, oh, Lord, speak to me, speak to me. Speak. Ask yourself this question. If that's the attitude you're supposed to have, when would you get up to obey the one that he has said to you? You know, it's the same way people misunderstand scriptures. A statement is made. Your mind just picks it up in one way. And you just think, ah, I disagree with it. I disagree with it. God simply says, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And you are now thinking, if that's how we should live, eh, that means we'll be continuously in prayer. Eh, eh, what is wrong with that? Now, this is the problem. What you understand by prayer is going to one place, closing your eyes. Oh, Father, Lord. Oh, Father. That's what you understand by prayer. You don't think or you don't realize, I can be driving, I'm praying. I can be having a meeting with people and then I pray. I can be in a meeting and things get so difficult and tense. I say, okay, please excuse me. I walk out in one minute and I come back and I just finish praying. And what do I pray? I'm not saying, hey, um, we have to stop this meeting now because or pause this meeting now. It's time for my prayer. And then you know, I go, oh, Father, I pray. No, I can step and say, Lord, what this man is saying, I'm not getting it. Please, can you help me understand? Even while sitting there, I can just still pray. I don't have to say, everybody, hold on, let me pray, please. Father, please give me understanding of what these people are saying. No, I don't really have to do that. But I can still pray. Dear Lord, I, I, need, I need help to understand what this person is saying. I've prayed. I don't even have to say, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, please help me understand what this man is saying. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, all those religious things that we have been taught to do wonderful things. You see, why are those things important? They set a pattern. Now, it's all what I'm talking to you about. But you see, if you follow those patterns in truth, now look at what Jesus said. He said, then Jesus said, that's verse 31 again, John chapter 8. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believe on him, who believe him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. When will you know the truth? Not when you come to me. When you continue. When you abide. When you stay. So you are taught to pray every morning and every night before you sleep. You were taught that growing up. Okay, fine. How, how well are you doing that? Now, it might be a man's teaching. It might be something man has, has told you. Oh, this is, if you want to follow God, this is what you should do. But when you are doing it, let your heart 
be clear you are doing it unto the Lord. Now, that's where the word of God will come to you. You see, a lot of God's children don't have the heart of obedience. Amazingly. Amazingly. Sometimes it's important you know and understand what, what kind of heart do I have. You may just have a stubborn heart and you don't realize it. There are preachers like that. They are just stubborn. When I mean stubborn, they, 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 they claim me, me, I don't follow normal. I follow, you know, what I feel is right. But you must differentiate between stubbornness and Holy Ghost led. Um, um, Oh, what's the word now? Between stubbornness and Holy Ghost led reform. You see, there are people who are just stubborn. They say, pay your tithe. Why should I tithe? You see, now there's the one who's tithing. And then he said, I want to know more about this. See, another person goes, why should I tithe? The response is, this, the response you will get is different. Just like we read in scriptures. An angel went to Zachariah and said, Hey, your wife will give birth to his son and you will call his name John. And, I, and Zachariah asked, How can these things be? And the angel said, I stand before the presence of God and you're asking me that question. You will be dumb, not speaking, until this thing comes to pass. Showing that the angel was angry with him. Okay, the same angel went to Mary. Hey, blessed are you amongst women. Thus says the Lord, you will bear a, ch a child and you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from the dead. And Mary asked, uh, for, uh, and Mary asked the same question. How can these things be? Seeing that I don't know a man. And the angel explained to her. So how come the same question got judgment and to another got a teaching? How come? It's the attitude. It's the attitude. It's not what they asked. It's the attitude by which they asked. So that's why I say, sometimes it's not everyone you think is um, a reformist. That is a reformist. Some are just wayward or, 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 or they are just renegades. I'm not going to accept. Don't think I will just accept anything like that. There is a thin line when you when you when you do this. There is a thin line. Now, everyone who's born of the Spirit has this element of stubbornness in them. Everyone who walks by the Holy Ghost have is perceived to an extent to be stubborn. But you see, let your when they say you are stubborn, let it be because. You are obeying someone. So now, the Lord has spoken to me. For example, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Would you say, were they rude to the king, Nebuchadnezzar? Now, someone may look at that and say, man, these guys are rude. How can they tell the king? Oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this manner, in this matter. That's rude. They should have said, oh, king, you know we are God's children. No, you see, because you don't understand what they said. You don't understand how they said what they said. They were not rude. One bit. They were not. The king knew. He understood them that they were not rude. See, now, the same way we've mis misquoted what they said about uh, even if God does not deliver them, they will not bow. See, that's what many people have interpreted that scripture to me, but that's not what they said. Oh, the Lord spoke to me one day. Say, if that's what they had said, they would have burnt. Because when you stand in faith between life and death, every utterance from your mouth matters. Any sleep will cost you your life. I'm telling you the truth. If you are standing in faith at such moments, make sure you are standing in faith. You must never exhibit or throw in a statement of doubt. So what did they say to the king? They said, if it is so, what do you mean if it is so? The king had said, look, 
I love you guys. Remember, the king had just promoted these guys. You know, Daniel had asked, after Daniel was promoted, Daniel had asked, you know, Lord, King, um, I have these friends who work with me. It would be nice if they can be appointed, you know, as, as um, assistants so that they can assist me in doing this work that you've given to. And the king okayed it. Okay. So now, this was these same fellows. And the king got report that those guys, which recently appointed, yeah, they are stubborn people. Mm -hmm. What did they do? The image you built, they said they will not bow to it. They said they will not bow. So yeah, they said they will not bow. Okay, get them for me. And he got them. So hey, I hear that you don't want to bow. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let them, because of you, because I don't want to destroy you guys, I'm going to let them beat these drums and blow the sounds again. And at the sound of the trumpet, you should bow. See, if you bow, then we are good. Let me read it. Because I think this is something that will help your understanding. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Book of Daniel. Oh, Libe de Kisha Katabara. Book of Daniel, chapter 3. Let me go straight to verse. Thirteen, Daniel chapter 3 and verse 13. Now, l- listen to this. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the image, the gold image which I have set up? Now, watch this. Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and, and all the sounds, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. I want you to follow this carefully. He says, now, if you hear the sound of all these instruments and you fall down, and worship the image which I have made good, perfect. Okay. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning furnace, fairy furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Now take note of what the king said. The king said, I'm going to give you an opportunity. And when you hear those sounds, fall down and worship. If you will just do that, we're good. No punishment. But if you do not worship, you will be cast into the fire. And there is no God that can deliver you from my hands. Now, The king made this statement out of some kind of concern because the decree has been given already. So the king was kind of advising them. You need to understand that. So, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need. See, old king didn't say, we are not mindful or something like that. Now, he says, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Follow. Yeah, okay, you say, we are not careful to answer in this matter. You know when you see that word careful, like rude? No. You need to understand their language, the way they spoke in those days. So it's like those days, they say, woman. Today, if you see, you see a lady, I say, woman, come here. You say, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But we're reading the Bible that even Jesus said, woman. Now, because the way it sounds, you would think he would say, woman. No. It's like saying, 
Madam. Oh, young lady. That's how they say, woman. Praise God. But wait here, woman. Now, now follow me. It says, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, get this point. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace and he will deliver us from your hands, O king. Statement of facts. The king said, if you don't, you'll be thrown into the furnace and no God can deliver you from my hands. They said, if that is the case, if that's the end of the matter, then we don't have a problem. That's why I say, we didn't even need to answer you. You would have just, I mean, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But then, look, if the case is furnace, we don't mind. Why don't we mind? Our God will deliver us from the furnace and will deliver us from your hands. Then they say, but if not, if not what? And this is where interpretation came in. If he doesn't deliver us, but that's not what they said. If that is the case, our God will deliver us. But if not the case, are you getting now? And that's what they say. If that's not the case, if it is another case, one thing should be clear so that we don't stretch this conversation. We will not bow. Simple. Now, because their hearts were set to produce the glory of God. Listen. As you follow the Lord, there's, there's, there are measures of grace you're supposed to be seeing in your life. And but those measures of grace will come when you are determined to prove to yourself you prove to yourself first. Anything we do with the Lord is proving to ourselves. The, the measures of faith we rise is proving to ourselves that this thing works. And I'll tell you the truth, the word of God works. Everything God has said works. Everything Jesus has said works. If you will follow and stand firm, you will see the ability of God in your life. Praise God. Our time is up. And hey, this is the end of the week. I pray for you that the grace of God will be mighty in your life. I pray that your faith will stand firm and produce results in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.